Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Fish Locker. Today we're out on a pier mark. Now you can probably see Falmouth in the background. The wind is a little bit stronger than I would have liked, and we've got um, about three hours of flood left. So, what I've done, you can see, I've just set one rod up. First thing, as soon as I get to a mark, I always like to get one base out at least. So, I've got one rod out already. I've got a Wessex rig, which is like a one up, one down. Fished at Ragworm, probably 60 70 yards out. The next one I'm going to rig up, I'm going to rig up another Wessex rig and I'm going to hit it at distance. See if I can pick up a flatfish or a schoolie. And then, um, while I'm waiting for a bite on those, what I like to do is fish with a, a little scratching rod just down the side of the pier. I've actually just got a bite. Just As if on cue. See the scratching rig? I showed you earlier only one of the other videos. Just little tiny hooks. These are it's probably an eight or a ten. And that's managed to get a little tiny ballon rass. Well, this wasn't supposed to be an LRF video, but looking that way. Let's get this guy back. All right. I'm just going to show you how I bait up my scratching rig. Right. See these normal ragworms? Well, the little wiggly part on the end of their tail, you can see is quite fine. This is the part that I want. So just take off a little piece. I mean, they are really fragile. Eh? I think it must be like a defence mechanism in that they can shed the end of their tail and just keeps wriggling while the rest of the worm can escape in the same way that like lizards do, snakes do. Right. All I do is take a little bit of the end and just thread it up the hook like that. Now these aren't going to be big baits because they're not for big fish. Uh, that's ample. Because I'm only going scratching around for little stuff. And then all I do is just literally just drop it down the side. Now, if you saw what I did there, I lowered it down until it hit the bottom, and then wound it until it was tight. So the rod tip was just below where the level of the pier was. So when I, lay, when I lay it down, it lifts the weight off the bottom about that much. Just so I can see the rod tip just settling. That way, if you get a bite, you'll see it straight away so you can strike it and go. What I like to do when I know I'm going to go fishing is I prepare my, all my rigs the night before and put them in my box. And as I showed you in one of the other videos, I put them in plastic bullets so that immediately when I get there it saves loads of time I just go right well I want to use a throat flapper rig straight away throat flapper rig not only are they in a bag clearly marked throat flapper rig but you can see they're on a winder what I'm using today right now is a Wessex rig and as you can see with this one what I've actually done is on the bottom hook is I've put some little tiny floating beads that's so that when this this is where I attach my weight when this sits on the bottom this will float just up, just off the bottom that way if there are any crabs around and they're stripping the baits this will be suspended off the bottom out of the way of the crabs hopefully in the, in the sight of a fish that's the theory when I wind that rod in, this, that rod there is set up exactly the same. When I wind that in in a minute, we'll find out if the floats are working. I don't know if you can see the bite on the rod tip. Just to say, see it knocking. All I do is I lower it down 
so it touches bottom like that then lay it down and all you're waiting for is like a little there look see there we are Now, what you're likely to catch using this rig is, um, well, as you can see, little ballons. You'll get uh, cork wings, gold tinnies, blennies, any type of gobe, anything really little that's hiding in, a, in around the cracks of the wall and um, right tight on the bottom. So you might even get like a dragonette or something. Let's see what we can find for you. I'm now going to show you how I bait up my Wessex rig. This is tight looking or not. See, this is the Wessex rig ready to go. It's got the sliding ledger element and it's got one hook suspended off the, off the bottom. Again with the floats. Now, as you can see, I have left a little bit of a tag end on the hooks and that's so that when I thread my ragworm up the hook these are just I don't know, normal standard rag just thread it up the hook like that pull it out when you slide it up past the tag end acts as like a stop now on this end on the bottom where I'm, I'm planning I'm hoping to get my flatfish I've got a stinger hook which has got a long shank and then higher off I've got like a little chino design this is where I'm hoping to pick up like a schoolie bass now these the same way while you do is just thread your worm up the hook like that pull it through and then pull the head of the worm up past the eye and then slide it back and that way the tag end hooks out of here acts as a bait stop and there we're ready to go there you can see I've just wound in this bait's been out here for 15-20 minutes that bait has been almost completely stripped Whereas the one with the floats on, because it's been suspended off the bottom, is still pretty well intact. So the floats are working. Hello. Um, on my little scratching ring, I've been getting quite a lot of bites and I've been taking the bottom bait and I've been missing them. So I've made up another rig. And this is, this truly is like a, a one up, one down. And all I've done, I'll show you now, look. It's barrel shove at the top and I made a blood loop and snipped it and then to here I've just made a loop for me to fix my my lead and then that's got a dropper off of about 12 inch and another little tiny hook so as you can see this will present one bait just off the bottom and one bait on the bottom so hopefully this is what I'll be picking up whatever it is that's giving me the bites on the bottom I suspect it's going to be a blenny or a goby we'll see and there we are like I thought a new rig the hook on the bottom found all culprit and it's a common blenny now be careful of these guys because although although they look quite innocent they give a little bit of a nip and if you can see I don't know if you can they've got like little tiny teeth at the front and they've got like two fangs on either side of the back here 
think I'll have to get the disgorger on this guy. Yeah, we're, there we are. Common blending. Again, another mini species. This one, a little corkwing wrasse. Now, you can tell they're corkwings by the markings on their face, by the black dot on the tail. And I think when this is blue, it shows that they're, they're mature. Now, this is a small one. And if that is the case, then it is small for being a, being a mature adult. But you generally, you don't get them much bigger than like the palm of your hand. There's another species for today, corkwing wrasse. Let's get him back. This is more like, this is what a corkwing wrasse should look like. This is the male. And you can see the beautiful markings that it's got. They are a stunning little fish. Quite a lot of the wrasse species are absolutely beautiful. Got a wound on his back, so it's maybe had a go at him. Just see that lump there. There we go. Corkwing wrasse. Stunning little fish. Wind's changed direction, so I've had to move the camera around the back of here to try and keep the wind noise down. But there's a, a very feisty, very feisty blenny. It's just tying me all up in knots. Now look, calm down. They're also called a shanny. Quite tough little fish. I'm trying, I'm trying to avoid it biting me. Because like I said, even though they're small, they do give a little bit of a nip. Scratching rig again. A pretty little ballin ras. I don't know if you can see, but this has got a few little lice on him. See there, though. Look at him. It's, uh, you see his bright blue lips. It's a good job I've been using this. Well, you can you can see now the benefit of using this because all of the fish so far in this session have come from this rig. If I hadn't have been fishing like this, I would have blanked potentially. The ballon ras. Well. I found the court what was annoying me. We call them. <laughs> it's a silver eel. We call them snotties. And this one is really going for it. If you can see it there. The, uh, they've got a habit of when you hook them, we call them snotties because the do this to wriggle all the way up your line and it covers all of your hook length in, <laughs> in slime. They're also they've got a really neat trick what they can do in that if they swallow the bait and the hook they tie like a little knot in the end of their tail and work it up their body until it forces the hook out of their mouth. Yeah, like that. Now this one this one is well hooked it's, it's perfectly hooked in the bottom jaw. So I shouldn't have too much problem unhooking it. But you can see, you can see with the, the grief that it's given there, look. See with the grief it's given me that they're a, a nightmare to deal with. Not got the bite power of congress. But it will still, will still give you a bit of a chewing if, if it gets all here. Just managed to land in all the ragworm, so it's covered in vermiculite. But 
Hold still. <laughs> what a nightmare. Common eel. Just chuck this one back. Yeah, that's why they're called snotties. They just cover you, absolutely cover you inside. There we are. As I said, scratching rig on the bottom. There's another species for you, species hunters. The ones with the yellow, the orange, the rock gobies. Now it's been a while since I've caught any, so that might be wrong. But there you are. Just a little tiny piece of ragworm on the bottom of a scratching rig. And all I was doing was just kind of bouncing it along the bottom. So this bait was just trundling along. And there you are. Another lovely little fish. Getting back. Now, we fished it. It was three hours up and one hour over high water. Now, uh, one of the little things that I check when I'm, when I'm packing away is obviously I take all my rigs off. I don't know if you can see there, just maybe about an inch up from the eye, from the eye of the hook, is where all, all the crabs that have been pecking away nipping away at my baits, they've damaged all the line. Well, if you don't check that, next time you come to use these rigs and you bait up and you cast out and you catch a decent fish, it will, it will snap. So, you feel it best, I mean, I, when I'm reeling my line in, I generally hold it between my fingers. So as it pulls through my fingers, you can feel a rough spot. That's where that is there. These, these rig winders, really simple and really good. Put two rigs on there, perfect. The session wasn't, wasn't what I'd hoped for. I was hoping for either a decent flatfish or a scoody bass, but you can't have everything your own way. It's, um, it's a bit of fun. I hope you've uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching. 